I love my antique brick walkway and I love the geranium roseanne spilling over it. And I loved my little box balls last year, which are evergreen, so at least there was something along the walkway in the winter. But these two on the end, I don't know if that's blight, box blight, or what, but they do not look good. We've been talking about potentially replacing the edges of the pathway with lavender. I think that would look so beautiful with the lavender just spilling over the walkway. And it looks pretty good here throughout the winter as well. It just sort of takes on like a very silvery green color. So potential changes to come to the front here. It's not looking so great with those brown box balls on the end. And over here on the right side, it's very shady. We have this red, beautiful red maple tree that desperately needs to be cut back. Um, but it's pretty shady over here. So there are, these are all shade loving plants. Um, we've got the Japanese forest grass there on the right, berry smoothie coral bells on the left. We have a regular, I think just elephant ear hosta in the back there and a stained glass hosta in the front, some still bees on either side. I have to say the flowers on these hostas this year have been incredible. around this side you can't really see it that much from the road but we planted some ladies mantle some alcabilla mollus over here there's a bleeding heart this always happens it dies back it has beautiful flowers in the early spring and then it dies back as soon as it gets hot we have a bunch more still bees and some more hostas over here And over here on the left side, gets a little bit much more half sun, half shade. Um, so there's a bit more variety in the planting over here. Up against the house, we have um, two Andromeda bushes. Those are evergreen. They have beautiful white flowers in the spring. In the front here is germander, more Japanese forest grass. This is a spirea that was in flower earlier. Our Allium Millennium has finally decided to show up. I swear it was a lot earlier last year, but that seems to be the thing with everything this year. And then in the back there against the house is a quick fire, pinnacle style hydrangea. And then I had grown some zinnias from seed, and I had some extra. They're back in the potage garden, so I just threw them up here. This one's decided to join us. But some of the other ones, I think, have succumbed to the rabbit that's living in our front yard. Those were irises that just went by. And then these I love this year. This is called, I think it's pronounced stachys. 
also known as betony, and the variety I believe is humello. I really don't know anything about these plants, but they have a really cool upright growing habit, and they have these gorgeous tall purple flowers that lasted, I mean, close to a month. There's the sprinkler system. Better hurry this up before the actual um, sprayers come on. Those are the peonies. And this is our bobo hydrangea. This was not in bloom at all last time I did the garden tour. And as you can see, it's just absolutely covered in blooms. And I've even cut some off to put in vases. So that's pretty cool. Got a sedum next to it. And this is our very awesome hibiscus. I love how the edges of the leaves come out and they're tinged with red, which is why I put it in front of this red Japanese maple. Um, and I've seen some rose mallows and rose of Sharon blooming around here, so kind of wondering if this baby's gonna give us some flowers soon. You might remember that this was smaller and it had a lot of um, insect damage about the month ago when I took the video. Um, I did find out what was on there. I'm forgetting what it was at the moment, but I sprinkled some diatomaceous earth on it just once. And either that helped or the insect's life, style, life cycle was over. Um, so that hasn't been a problem since. And we have our archway here, which is still waiting for the rose to climb up and over it. I'm not very patient. Um, this is the David Austin, the Generous Gardener Climbing Rose, and it had one flush of blooms in the spring, and now we're getting some more. So that'll be exciting to see. Some more sedums. In the back here up against the fence, we have laurel bushes. And I want to plant some more that's evergreen to kind of give us some privacy into our backyard here. I was thinking of maybe trying to take some cuttings, um, but we'll see how ambitious I am. I think now is the time to do it. And this, my friends, is one of my favorite views of the garden, looking over the cottagey side. And this beautiful endless summer bloom stuck, bloom struck hydrangea it's looking beautiful. There's a white lily, day lily. Ooh, sunny. I gotta move here. There we go. All right, I have to be honest here. I was not happy with this side of the garden a couple weeks ago. This is sort of the rose garden. There's a couple shrub roses planted around the bird bath and it looked absolutely gorgeous in the spring. The rose foliage was this like dark, beautiful green and in front of it was the light, light pink double tulips I planted that almost looked like peonies. And then the, in the back there, um, the viburnum came out and it was white. And there was the, then after that, it was the beautiful catman in the front with beautiful blue flowers on it. And then all the roses came, all these pink, um, those pink, Echinacea came, and then the bubblegum pink Monarda came, and it was basically just a hot mess of pink over here, and no other colors. The hydrangea wasn't in bloom yet, 
I was like, oh god, this is hideous, I need to change some things. Um, but, like anything in the garden, just waited a couple weeks and I actually heavily pruned back these shrub roses. I should have done it more in the spring, but I didn't. There was these like huge tall growth on them. They were falling over, they were um, intertwining with each other. It was creating this like damp mess in there and it was starting to get black spot on the roses. So I just did a hard prune. I figured they could handle it even at this time of year. And as you can see, everything's growing back. They're less of a hot mess. On the other hand, this part of the garden, I have been loving. Um, sort of our idea for the color scheme well, it originally was planted, it was, everything was very purple. And there was the, the agastache on the right there with the lime green color. But we added some more lime green um, over on the left there. And I'm super happy with this lime green and purple color scheme. Over in this middle part here are the Lavender Phenomenal and behind it the Golden Jubilee Agastache. And then in between are the Tough Stuff Lace Cap Hydrangeas and the new Kusha Dogwood that we planted. Some salvias and stuff that are I chopped back, hoping to get another round of blooms on those. The white cone flower, Echinacea. And then this crazy butterfly bush. I cut that back to about a foot in the spring. And it is now probably about seven or eight feet tall. I've been seeing lots of butterflies on it, so that's pretty cool. I love this sea of echinacea here. The only problem is there's actually a liatris hidden back here. And you can't see it at all, so I'm, I'm gonna have to move that somewhere. I was obsessed with our uh, Elium sphericephalon this year. They were this sort of bright raspberry color. Now they're fading, but they're still kind of cool. In the front here we have Russian sage, some daylilies, a geum, a lime green geum I planted. And in the back there is a vitex. And I love the color of these flowers. It's very similar to the cat mint. For some reason, I was expecting this to bloom a little bit earlier. It just started blooming. And it's now the end of July. And then to the left, and actually to the right, we have the little lime hydrangea. We used to have these gi the giant sort of st standard endless Summer mop had blue hydrangeas here. They had grown out of control. They were like six, over six feet tall. Our neighbors couldn't see when they backed out of their driveway. So we took those out and replaced them with these little limes. They shouldn't, shouldn't get much bigger than they are now. They have these beautiful lime green blooms, which I think looks beautiful against the purple. Which brings us to another favorite view in the garden. And then on the end here, we have Amsonia as the frothy plant, um, a sedum, ground cover, 
And then I had put in these obedient plants last year, kind of on a whim. They were probably like six to eight inches tall and they were in bloom. And I probably didn't read the tag. So I had no idea they were going to get this tall. But they're kind of mixing in with the Amsonia and I kind of love it. So that was a happy accident. Well, there you have it. That is how our Zone 6B Rhode Island Cottage Garden is looking at the moment. It's the end of July. Pretty happy with it. Probably will still make some changes next year. But that's the fun of it. Thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.